Geeks and Gamers. My hair is in a ponytail today because we're going on a field trip. We're doing something a little different. Usually on this channel I do videos about video games. Um, but one of the biggest aspects of video games is buying them, where to buy them. And uh, you, you have GameStop, you have online sources like Amazon, you have digital storefronts like the PlayStation Store. But sometimes you just want to go to an old-fashioned game store. And uh, luckily there's a lot of retro stores in the world, um, so you can easily find a retro store in your location, hopefully. Don't quote me on that. I have a few around me that I go to, but um, I should start off by saying that I live in Frankfort, Kentucky. I live in the capital of Kentucky. Um, please don't stalk me. You don't know my home address. So um, I have a few stores here, but it's not, it's not much. Um, so like surrounding me are two bigger cities, Louisville and Lexington. Um, they both have retro stores here and there. And one day while I was in Lexington do it, uh, running some errands, I came across a Goodwill. Um, I was like, oh cool. Anytime I see a Goodwill, I usually go to it just because you never know what you find at Goodwill. So I was going to this Goodwill and when I pulled up a few uh, stores down was this little game store called Retro Rewind. And um, the guy that owns the place um, told me that they've only been there since December. Uh, this is a fairly new store. And I thought this store had a lot of personality. I thought this store had a lot of charm. Um, and I just, I wanted to do a video about it. So I talked to the guy and um, I'm here to give you a little tour of the um, store. I'm not gonna be talking much beyond this point. Um, I'm mainly gonna hand the reins over to the um, owner, Ashley, he owns the store. So with that said, um, have fun with my tour of Retro Rewind. Games. Uh, my name is uh, Ashley Curtis. I'm the owner here. Uh, I'd like to welcome you guys. Jump right into um, why you opened the store. Okay, and guys. How you yeah, opened I opened up on December 16th, and kind of some things to go into of why I opened up. Some of the stores locally here in town you'd go around to, and you would feel a void of walking in of some questions you would have or some help that you would need. Uh, a lot, you know, the, the revamping of all the retro gaming has kind of taken off. Oh, it's a lot bit bigger out west than it is here, but it's kind of catching up around little places. And so there, you know, the need and the demand is growing. So you go in these little stores and you have a lot of general questions and everything. And, and you walk into stores that are overpriced. Uh, you know, the owners kind of set the rules and the employees are, are the people doing the groundwork and they know how this stuff works and they want to be able to help you, but sometimes they can't. Uh, so there was a lot of different things going on around here that I just felt that there wasn't a, uh, a store for and, uh, and everything else. And so, um, my bad, dude. And so, uh, but when, you know, doing a store or whatnot and going around and, and having all these problems, I just, like certain things like customer service or when someone has a general question about a game or the pricing, I just kind of felt that uh, there wasn't nowhere to go or do nothing like that. So kind of being transparent and having a model to where you could actually go into somewhere and look up pricing and kind of see where it was at and know it was where it should be and not overpriced, kind of would stop all, all the BS right then and there, you know, the overpricing and the... the just the outrageous prices and whatnot that some of the places are doing around here and just kind of trying to bring honesty back to it like I can almost tell when people walk in the store they're almost like they're so used to being ripped off by other stores they come in here with their armor on almost kind of like expecting the same thing it's almost like hey no like these are the way it is it's the way I set stuff up and everything else for that and I think that's just kind of a better philosophy for a retro community I think it uh, definitely helps you know it helps everything out being honest with it and that kind of jazz and uh, you know, as far as the other stores in town, the competition, I think, you know, yeah, they might have some better inventory, there might be some corporate stores and whatnot, you know, and they might have a little bit more than me, but what they don't do is go above and beyond, and that's where I try to set the difference. And uh, you can come in here, you can play stuff, you can talk to us, look stuff up, we'll help you, we'll, we'll do it all right in front of you and not trying to hide and do anything about it, you know, and, and that's the way I, I feel it should be, you know, kind of get back to the roots, and I just feel a lot of these places around here, 
I've lost the the notion of what what the roots are supposed to be about. It's supposed to be fun and about gaming, about you know getting people together, about the retro community, uh, and, and reliving a lot of this, this nostalgia that, that we had you know one day. And I think it's kind of gotten away from that to almost where it's such a business model that you almost feel like you're on Wall Street somewhere, and that's not the way it should be. Uh, you know, I do this not not to make the dollar. I do this for the games and the love of it, and everything else should fall into place after that. And that's kind of been my model on it, and the way I kind of felt. I kind of picked the best of you know other little things and what I thought would, would work good on it, and you know, kind of went with it. And uh, just had a couple opportunities, and uh, kind of went with it, and here I am. So that's kind of what got me, you know, into it and all that. So okay, well, there's a lot of personality in here. You want to talk about that? Well, yeah, I mean, like, the, you know, that's funny you say that. Like, a lot of people do say my personality comes in here or whatnot, but I figure for a game, st you know, I wouldn't want to go to a game store that wouldn't have personality, you know, that wouldn't have anything on the walls or whatnot, you know. I think a lot of the stuff that comes from gaming is, is, is a cool, different world. A lot of people that, that game want to escape, you know, the world that they're in or, or want to go to a fantasy-type realm to, to play and get away from. So at least try to create some of that to where they come in. There's a lot going on to look at and, make them go walk down memory lane for whatever reason. I guess everyone's got, you know, their reasons for, for wanting to, to get back into gaming and collecting or whatnot. But I think the one thing everyone's got in common is that we all miss it and if it had it and wanted it again, want to relive it. It was fun, is what it boils down to. So I think if you know, if everything else like, screams fun about it, you know, and that that, that kinda of helps the atmosphere. But uh, I've all you know, of course in the vision too, you know, who doesn't uh, ever have the vision of being a gamer especially of wanting to do something like this and always knowing what you're seeing it and how you would do it, you know, so I've always had different ideas for it, so that's just kind of part of it, so, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what all do you carry? Are there anything? Oh, like, like, pretty much, you know, at first we wanted to do just strictly retro stuff, but pretty much, so like, everything from, from Atari to, to Pong systems, ColecoVision and televisions, we do all the old stuff, too, everything from, like, Nintendos to Super Nintendos and, and 64s and, you know, Sega, Sega CD, pretty much everything under the sun. Uh, a lot of the stuff that, that, that we kind of starting to mess around with is like the PS4, the Xbox One stuff. We have some minor stuff. A lot of people don't bring us uh, Nintendo stuff to trade up, you know, for the old stuff. So that's kind of slow going, but eventually we do want to have a little bit of everything for everybody and do have some new stuff. But we do order, you know, if someone comes in and wants an Xbox, you know, One or wants a PS4 or wants any of the new stuff, we, we don't care at all to help locate it or to, to look stuff up and try to find someone like a deal, you know, per se, to, 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 to help them out in the prices or whatnot and, and send them messages. And one, that's one thing that a lot of people I think is kind of cool that when we're transparent about it, you know, that, that what other places are going to do a lot of that, you know, help you track stuff down. It's just not non-existent anymore. So in a world that uh, of something that, that I, don't know, I, I feel different ways that I would want to do, I want to be able to provide those services. Um, so, you know, all kinds of games, pretty much every retro game you can think of under the sun, like I said, from Atari all the way up to, to Xbox to, and, and even the newer stuff we can do. Um, we, we do a battery exchange, like batteries in the cartridges, if you got a, a safe state that goes out or something like that, we can fix that stuff. We do pin replacements, we clean a lot of the old retro systems. Um, if it's something like a passenger wise, something real major, you know, if we can, if it's been our means to do it, we'll, we'll try to do it, and if not, we'll definitely let you know. So we offer quite quite a few, you know, services for the retro gamer, for all, all your retro gaming needs. Pretty and, much, yeah. So. And I noticed that you carry some like Japanese games. Too. Yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, the import stuff is going to be a real focus. Uh, I like to bring a little bit of Japan into the store, um, even though it's slow going. I like to do like Famicom, Super Famicom stuff. A lot of times, I will have uh, different options for different uh, uh, foreign systems or whatnot to be able to play some of the import stuff on. Um, eventually, you have to, you know, do like the Sega Saturns and all that stuff, and have a lot of the Japanese games. Um, and eventually, the way I when I first. You know, from when I had the idea of starting the store, I had, you know, I kind of thought what I needed. Now that I've been here for a few months uh, since Christmas, now I kind of see what I actually need, and we're kind of going through a facelift right now. So eventually, I'm going to have it up here. Where you know, I'm going to have more shelving up here and at the top here, and everything's going to be hung. So when you come in, you can see all the different uh, accessories that go with each different section, and just make it really like literally floor to ceiling. Nothing but games, you know, and I just think that'd be really so cool. A lot of, you know, import games and retro games, and have some newer stuff and uh, some stuff displayed or whatnot. So. Uh, and you can just have some cool toys in here, whether, you know, whether it be arcade machines or cool posters or, stuff, you know, like you're talking about personality on the wall. It's just a lot of cool, cool, neat, uh, neat stuff, you know, so it'd be a cool, neat store. It's kind of always my, always wanted to do it, and that's something I thought the, the town definitely needed, so. Do you have anything in here you want to highlight? Any pieces or anything? Uh, yeah, we can highlight. Uh, I've got uh, the Nintendo uh, Play Choice cabinet over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see if we get to the light or not. Uh, I've got that thing. That thing's pretty much like a big Nintendo, and it takes up to 10 uh, NES cartridges in it. 
and you can go through there and basically set it up. And I think the premise is, you know, the more you have to put in uh, tokens or quarters for time, and you can play those ten a lot of games any way you see fit there within that amount of time. Um, we've got a multi-card in it. That's kind of neat set up for on free play right now. That's kind of a neat thing. Um, some of the other things that I kind of want to showcase. So we've got like a Atari section back there. Uh, I've got several TVs set up here that you can come in and kind of play some stuff with. Uh, people are more than welcome to come in and uh, pick a, you know anything off the wall and put it in, play it, try it out before they got it uh, or buy it or whatnot, see if they like it or whatnot. Um, or, you know, a lot of uh, people worry about disc being dirty or scratched or stuff like that. We have a disc resurfacer, so if something does sneak by us, we try to clean and uh, make sure everything is good on the floor. Uh, we're not perfect, you know, stuff does get through our hands, so but we, we will check it out and make it right, whatnot, if it's not. Um, so just a lot of a lot of neat things. But I guess you know we have Atari sections. So you can play Atari stuff and pull stuff off. You know we have a big screen TV here that will show YouTube videos of all the, the gaming stations or whatnot or on through here. Uh, I plan on doing some uh, tournaments of all different types. I'm on social media stuff and Facebook and I think Instagram and uh, Twitter and all that. So eventually we'd like to ask the, the people, uh, you know, that come in here and that like us what they would like to do. Uh, I think that would be kind of a cool thing and try to work that in somehow or, and even do game swaps or something. Just, so, you know, stuff to get a retro community together um, to get them uh, uh, more closer together. I feel there's one here, but I guess it just feels like it's, it's broken apart where there's not really any good cool places to, to go to and hang. I mean, there's a few out there, um, but for a lot of for the retro stuff, it's non-existent. It's all for newer stuff, and or, or, or board gaming, or card gaming, and that that type of world. Nothing for old retro gaming. So, you know, hopefully, like to, to be able to, to kind of step in the scene on that. Um, but pretty much, you know, the whole store is a highlight. You know, I always like to say it's not just a game store; it's an experience. You know, a lot of us that are older that, that live this stuff through the day, you know, we know what it what it's about, and we, we you know we live through it. Of course, you know, we love every bit of it. But what's really cool is the younger generation coming in here, checking it out getting into it and, and you know educating them on it how Nintendo works and how the cartridge based systems works and you know I guess how the, the technology differences from from we gamed and, and to how it is today so there's a lot of aspects of it that you know they're really cool and highlights and and uh, a lot of cool things to come here and check out you know so yeah is there anything else you want to add? I mean, people are people are going to be watching this that don't even live in the state. Oh, right, right. Uh, so. You know, we're in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we're at Least Town Road. Uh, we're in Middlethorpe Shopping Center. Uh, Goodwill's uh, to, to be your left, and Pops uh, resells down here to your right. Um, it's 1437 Least Town Road, 40511 here in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, we're open uh, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, Pretty much uh, gone over yeah, Come check us out, you know. So more than happy to try to, you know, help you out on all your retro gaming needs and, and whatnot. Be happy to have you. Cool. I really want to thank um, Ashley Curtis for letting me uh, film inside of his store and letting me get him on camera for a while. This was a really fun video to make. Um, I thought making a video about this little store that I found would be really interesting. Um, if you're ever in the area, please check this store out. Um, even if, you know, if you're not, you can send him your support on his social media pages. Um, or just thanks for watching. Thanks for even be, being interested to watch, even if you don't live anywhere near here. Um, just thanks for being interested. Um, I know this was something that I had fun making. I, I, I hope he had fun. And uh, I also want to give a special shout out and thanks to my good friend Ethan from the channel What It All Meant. Um, he makes film analysis and he was actually there with me uh, to film most of that. So, um, yeah, it was just a fun experience. I had fun making this video. It was something different and uh, I, I hope you all liked it. Hey geeks and gamers, TurboBot90013 here, remember to subscribe to the TurboZone for more content, the arcade overlords thank you, stay retro, TurboZone.